Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today's video, we're, we're doing the food plot review. Basically, I'm five weeks since I planted my food plots. And in today's video, I'm going to show you my big food plot after about two weeks. And then we're going to go through and show all of my food plots here after five weeks and how they're all doing. This is going to be a great video. There's a lot of lessons to be learned in this video. Uh, lessons for me and lessons for you. So stay tuned. We're going to start looking at these food plots and see the mistakes I made. And we'll see how I did things the right way. So let's go take a look. So if we look at the mistake that I made when I planted this plot, really what I did is I knew I had clover in here and I knew when I disked the, disked the clover up that it would come back and I really wasn't too worried about the clover coming back. But what I didn't pay attention to was I did have areas in here that had a lot of grass. And what I really should have done before I planted this was I should have went through and sprayed it anyway. I would have damaged some of the clover but it would have killed this grass off. And then when I disked it up, this grass wouldn't have been as likely to come back as quickly. And the other thing that happened was I was praying for rain and boy did I get it. I got a lot of rain uh, probably about three or four days after I uh, planted this and then I got rain two, three days after that. So this has got a lot of rain on it and basically it helped my food plot but it also helped this grass retake itself. Now I'm kind of stuck because now my uh, my food plot's starting to germinate, so I've got little itty bitty brassica seeds or uh, plants popping up right now. I can't really go now and, and spray this; it's a little too late. So I'm probably going to have to live with it unless they wanted to take the risk of killing off my whole plot and redoing it over again. And at this point, I really just don't have the time to do that. So I'm going to have to hope that once my brassicas germinate that they'll get enough of a boost and they can uh, choke this grass out and take over. Probably what will happen is the grass will choke out my brassica plants and I'll have a little patch of grass here. I've goofed up enough that this little area right in here is probably going to stay in grass and maybe a little bit of clover mixed in with it. Hey guys, here I am uh, September 1st so I think I'm about five weeks uh, since I planted this uh, field and here's the results uh, and they're not good uh, it's pretty bad actually at this point now it's been pretty much taken over by this field's arch nemesis which is right down here i think you call it pigweed and this field's had it in here for a while every time i disc it up it gets worse um, and it had you know my brassicas had been doing pretty good and then this stuff just uh, just exploded here over the last couple weeks and I still have plants in here so it's not like this thing's a total loss but it's uh, it's not nearly as good as what it could have been you see over here I've got these patches of patches of grass I've still got some brassica plants down in there but they're just not growing like they should be. So, uh, the, yeah, if we take a look, I mean, this field is just all, all pigweed, really. I mean, I've got plants in here. The problem is, most likely, they won't amount to much. Uh, they won't probably, they won't get nice bulbs on them. The the radishes probably won't get nice big tubes on them like they like they should, and it's going to be kind of disappointing. I think the the disappointing part is this is my big field. Um, and I pretty much uh, goofed it up. And I think what I'm going to have to do in the future until I get this pigweed under control is I'll probably have to go to the county extension and rent a no-till drill for the next time. And that way I'm not uh, bringing all that seed back up to the surface every time I disc this field I just bring all that pigweed seed right back to the surface and as soon as I plant something uh, you know I whatever I plant starts growing and so does the pigweed so and then when once it grows now I'm basically if I don't come through here and cut this down I'm basically reseeding the thing with pigweed all over again so I got to take care of it to try and keep the 
the amount of seed in this food plot, you know, weed seed, I guess, under control. So the good news is the other smaller plots look a heck of a lot better than this one. So there's, there is a bright side to this story. All right, here I am at, uh, this is probably my second largest food plot. And as you can see on this one, I'm gonna move around here just a little bit. This one turned out much better. And this is gonna go into basically the preparation. I mean, I did a much better job. I sprayed this one ahead of time. Didn't have all the weeds in it like I did the other one over there. And it's doing a lot better. Uh, it really doesn't have any weeds in it at all uh, to speak of. I mean, there's always going to be some weeds, but let me get down here. You can see, I mean, again, this is five weeks worth of growth here. Um, you got a mixture of the turnips, and uh, here's like a turnip. Uh, the where's the radish at? Radishes are over here. And then the the rape is right right here. Rape kind of looks like a lettuce. So this uh, this plot's looking pretty good. And if any of you had watched my previous video, you know this back section here was always the harder one to grow. So it's doing really well. This back back portion here is this is where the deer like to hang out, and it's doing pretty good. And I'm gonna pan around over to this side. And this side's doing pretty good too. So overall the whole thing's not doing too bad. Looking pretty good right now. We'll go and take a look at my uh, my next smaller plot and see how that one's doing as I take a walk through the property. Again, five weeks worth of growth, or growth right here. And I may, on these plots here, since they're doing much better, I'm probably in the next couple days going to take and just give it a top coat of urea just to give them a little bit of a boost um, here for the next month because they probably really only have about one more month of growing left in them and then we'll get a frost or two and that'll be the end of it they'll stop growing and um, and that's about the time the deer will start hitting them so anyway we'll go and take a look at the next plot okay here's the probably my next biggest plot this one's still pretty small it's like maybe an eighth of an acre but give you a good idea this one turned out pretty well too pretty good um, same amount of growth five weeks of growth on it right now um, again I think as I mentioned in the other food plot it's about ready for a, a top coat of urea it, it kind of I don't know to me it's over the last week or so it really hasn't grown much and I think maybe it could use a little bit of a boost. Um, like I said, I'm September 1st right now. I've got about maybe one more month of growing and I've got to try and get some some uh, bulbs on the turnips and some roots or some some tubes on the uh, the radishes. So this one did pretty good. Um, really not a whole lot in the way of weeds in here so again I guess I guess the main thing is is I do know what I'm doing when I actually do what I'm supposed to do <laughs> there's an idea eh? so um, when I properly prepared these um, they turned out pretty good I'll show you the other thing I was doing today and I didn't uh, I didn't bring the camera along for that project, but it was a lot of work. You can see, see all the trees I got cut over here. It's because I don't know if any of any of you had seen my previous uh, video on this food plot, but I've got a brand new elevated stand back there and I didn't have a shooting lane into this food plot so I had to do a little bit of a uh, tree cutting this morning today was a great day for it too because it was about 60 degrees this morning and um, 
definitely got to have your safety gear on so that means jeans and uh, chainsaw chaps so I need it to be a little bit cooler when I go and do that kind of work and today was a perfect day for it so I got that done so now I got a nice shooting lane right here um, I made another one down here right through here so I should be able to you know if any of the deer move from one side to the other of this little food plot I should be able to to get a crack at them from that uh, from that blind during uh, during gun season so I'm going to go show you there's one more uh, food plot I had done and it's the really small one it, it's also accessible from from that blind right there we'll go take a look at that one right now uh, that one I didn't put a whole lot into that one but that one's growing pretty good as well I gave it a good spraying uh, the only thing I didn't do with that one was cult a packet so we'll show you what the difference is um, that that one didn't have a cult a packet on it but I don't know that it really made a huge difference well let's go take a look okay here I am at this uh, I'm gonna call this one a really this one's a really micro plot but like I mentioned a minute ago in that other food plot this one didn't get cult packed so I really just put the seed on top and then let let the rain do the work and hit yeah you know, I could you can see I got some some plants growing I will say I guess I'd have to admit it's really not quite as good as the feet the other two fields that I did put I did run the cult packer over top of them but as you can see it's it still grew I mean I've got stuff growing in here and it's growing probably about as good as the other plots just I don't think I got as much germination I think that was really the difference so this one's a little it's a little more sparse through here and I think that's really really the difference um, but the big the key thing is is right in this area right here because I've got my stand right over there I've got a couple of you know, these apple trees right here and this area right in here is prime uh, bedding it right in here I probably have about maybe about 40 yards that's how wide this is before you get to my other trail but this right here is prime primo bedding so what I'm hoping for is with this little bit of food right next to that bedding area I'll get the deer walking out into this in the morning or maybe in the evening right before you know on their way out to the bigger fields and you know be able to get a crack at them through in here if I wouldn't have gotten rain on this right away it wouldn't have looked this good so I mean that's the other thing if you don't have a cult packer um, I recommend at least you know use your tractor or your four-wheeler or whatever you have and if you got an old bed spring even drag it across the top just to get that seed covered up um, because otherwise you really then need the rain to do the work and sometimes we don't always get to do our planting right before it rains so um, yeah I'd, if you got something to cover it up run over it with your tires or whatever it's always better than than just leaving it um, right on the ground okay guys there we go that's a wrap on uh, today's video uh, hopefully there's a lot of things that you can learn in this video I know uh, my big food pot back there that was a big mistake and um, I hope all of you can learn a lesson from that um, I'm going to do things differently on that one next year, I think for sure. Uh, I can do a better job on that food plot and not repeat the same mistakes. Um, I was trying something new this year with not spraying that clover and uh, that was a big mistake. Every other year I've actually sprayed that and I had better results. So um, definitely whether you want to keep your clover or not, go ahead and spray it anyway, uh, especially if you're going to plant back over top of it. So. Um, other than that you can see in my other food plots that things turned out the way I expected them to so overall I'm fairly happy with my food plotting this year I mean I would have loved for that big food plot to have turned out but oh well you know you experiment and then you sometimes you get burned and I definitely got burned on that one so 
lesson to be learned, and the good, th good thing for you is you get to learn that lesson too. So um, hopefully you like this video. If you do, go ahead and share it. Uh, click the like button. Um, if you want to see other videos like this, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, make sure to click the, the bell. That will give you a notification when I put up a new video. There's going to be more videos coming this fall uh, as I look at I'm be doing hanging tree stands, um, doing more food plot work, um, and then getting ready for the season. I'm going to go through some of the things that I do uh, as, as I get ready for the hunting season. So, so stay tuned. A lot of activity will be coming up on the channel, especially related to um, the hunting season as it, as it gets on top of us here quickly. One month away here in Michigan, so I'm getting excited. See you in the next video.